Let's go on to another concept. I want to talk about streamlines. The definition of a streamline is that it's a line that is everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. What does that mean? It means you can draw this line. It's everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. So I draw everywhere parallel to the velocity vector. I can pick another one. Here the velocity vector is in this direction. It's a streamline. Here we start to have a little bit of so those are streamlines, a little bit of upwards motion in this, a little bit of upwards motion on this one. So those are streamlines. They're everywhere tangent to the velocity vector, and you can take any velocity field like this and draw lines which are tangent like that. And it's actually a very useful thing to do. If the streamline, and it is by definition, is always tangent to the velocity vector, that means that a normal to this line, so a normal to a streamline, if I were to draw that anywhere, is always perpendicular to the velocity. And that means that the dot product of the velocity in n is equal to zero. And so there can be no flow through a streamline. This is acts as if it's a boundary. There is no flow crossing any of these streamlines. And that makes it a very useful tool for visualization as well. You can glean a lot of information from the flow field by looking at a streamline. If we imagine, let's say these are two adjacent streamlines, and they happen to go like this. This is one streamline, this is another. I can put an arrow on it just to show that the velocity vectors that we drew this tangent to are moving in that direction. And what do I see here when I do this? I imagine a situation at 1 and at 2. If no mass flow is going through this surface, that means the mass flow rate here is equal to the mass flow rate here. If the flow is additionally incompressible, then I know that the velocity and the area are related. The area between these two streamlines is larger here, and so for an incompressible flow, I can say that V1 has to be smaller than V2. This area has decreased between these two streamlines, and so the flow had to speed up in order to conserve mass going through there. So anytime I see streamlines, I can look at them, and especially if it's an incompressible flow, so that I can say the density is everywhere the same, I can say that as those streamlines move closer together, the flow is in fact speeding up. If the streamlines are moving further apart in the direction of the flow, then of course the flow is slowing down. And that gives us a very useful tool to look at and understand fairly complex velocity profiles. Okay, next I want to do an example where we're using conservation of mass. Perhaps this is a little startling question uh, without the title, so I'm using conservation of mass. This is the velocity field that I just made up. I plotted it again, and I ask you the question, is this a physical, two-dimensional, flow, incompressible flow field? What do I do with that? Where do I go? Well, let's think about it. The clue here was using conservation of mass. We've calculated already the mass flow rate, which is leaving this surface. And I can see from these velocity vectors that there's very clearly mass leaving this through this surface x equals 1. The velocity vector here, and if we look at the function, when y is equal to zero, there has to be a y component of velocity to carry mass through this surface. When y is equal to zero, that v component is zero. And so there's no mass crossing this surface. If I look at this surface, x equals zero, again, I can look at the velocity vectors and see that they're all pointed in this direction. I can go to my equation and say when x is equal to zero, the u component of velocity is zero and I need a u component of velocity to carry anything through that surface. So, if I were to carry out that integration on this surface, the velocity is again zero. So I have flow leaving the domain here, calculated a moment ago, and if I look at this surface, again I see all of these velocity vectors are oriented outwards. That means that there is in fact flow leaving this section. So what does that mean? If this is an incompressible flow field, here is my conservation of mass equation. If it's incompressible, this term is equal to zero, and I can pull the density out of this derivative operator, divide it through, and the density is removed from this equation. And I'm left with the divergence of the velocity is zero. Well, we've already talked about the meaning of the divergence of the velocity. If the divergence of the velocity is zero, it means that the sum of the flow going into any box that we draw, I could draw any box I wanted to, whether it was here, whether it was here, any arbitrary closed surface, the divergence around that surface means that the flow going in has to equal the flow going out. Very clearly, we've just established that if we draw this box here, the boundaries of our domain, 
that there's flow going out this surface, there's flow going out this surface, there's nothing coming in, so we have only flow going out and no flow coming in, so it cannot be a physically meaningful incompressible flow field. It does not conserve mass. Somehow mass is being created in this box and it's leaving the box, but it's never coming in. So we can say using conservation of mass, this is not a physical two-dimensional incompressible flow field. Incompressible because we need this form of the equation in order to do it. Two-dimensional because we're looking at a two-dimensional velocity vector and we need it to satisfy conservation of mass if it's going to be physical. And of course, if we write our conservation of mass in Cartesian coordinates, we get du dx plus dv dy plus w dz is equal to zero. And this is a two-dimensional flow, so this term is zero. We're only looking at du dx plus dv dy equals zero. So we saw that the velocity field that we had made up on the previously did not provide a physically valid and compressible flow field. And so let's show how we can use conservation of mass that if we're given one component of the velocity field, uh, we can calculate the other component such that it does represent a physically valid incompressible flow field. Start with our conservation of mass equation for a 2D incompressible case, du dx plus dv dy equals zero in Cartesian coordinates, and we can substitute in our known new component into this equation. So I need to take the derivative of u with respect to x, the derivative of 2x with respect to x is simply 2, and so my equation becomes 2 plus dv dy is equal to zero. I can now solve that for dv dy. dv dy is equal to minus 2, and I can integrate that to see that v is equal to minus 2y, integrated that respect to y, and it could have had any arbitrary function that was only of x, because when I, if it had a function of x here and I took the derivative of this, this will become 0, and it could have had an arbitrary constant. When I take the derivative with respect to anything, that constant is going to become 0 as well. So we have a whole family of velocities that are going to meet this constraint. I'm going to choose the simplest one. I'm going to choose the constant being 0 and the function of x equals 0. I'll show you in a moment why these don't matter, though you can see it mathematically here. And that means that I'm going to choose v equals minus 2y. So there is my velocity field that does so satisfy this conservation of mass equation, and therefore it is a physically valid, incompressible, two-dimensional flow field. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Here I plotted this velocity field, the one that we just calculated. Given u, we calculated the v component, and now I've plotted this field here. It's the same as it was before when it comes to this boundary down here and this boundary down here. When x is equal to zero, the u component that's needed to carry flow through this face is equal to zero, so there's no mass flow coming through this zero, through this face. When y is equal to zero, the v component that's necessary to carry flow through this face down here is zero, and so there's no flow coming in or out of this face. But now if we were to calculate it as we did before, we would see that the flow going through this face is exactly equal to the flow, the flow coming in through this face is exactly equal to the flow going out this face. And if we wanted to draw our streamlines, we see the flow, try to draw these as nicely tangent to the velocity vectors, the flow is coming in that top face, turning 90 degrees and going out that side face. And of course, let's think about what would have happened if we had allowed an arbitrary function of x to be added on to the v velocity component here. To carry mass through a surface, the velocity has to be perpendicular, so we know that the v component carries mass through this face and through this face. If I added a function that was only a function of x, it could be any function it wants, it will change that v component everywhere along this as only a function of x. That means that on this surface down here, it will be changed exactly the same way, and therefore We'll see the flow, if it makes it more negative, we'll see more flow coming in through this face, but exactly that same amount will go out through this face here. And so conservation of mass will still be respected. Exactly the same thing would happen if we added a constant, except it would be a constant value we added into this. We could bring more flow in because we've added a constant to this, but that means we would be adding, having the exact same, in, the exact same flow rate additionally going out this face down here, and conservation of mass would still be respected. It would still be a valid two-dimensional incompressible flow field. And that concludes our conservation of mass examples and looking at visualizing some flow fields.